Hi, this is Victor Lopez. Uh, this is a poetry reading uh, sampler of uh, my newer work. And uh, thank you very much for uh, listening. I uh, hope that uh, you will enjoy at least some of the poems. <laughs> Again, thanks for listening. Linked Haikus on Poetry A poem is a song that resonates a lifetime in receptive hearts. Poetry is a life that grows from the fertile soil of our broken dreams. Poets are weavers who spin fragile threads of hope from dust in the wind. Requiem for Mom, Lita, 1929 to 2018. You were only seven when you went blind, but could see again in less than two years. Two years later, you were seeking to find full-time work to help your mom ease her fears. Eight brothers and sisters at home and dad dead from fascists caresses in dark, dank cells. You rolled up your sleeves without tears or dread, worked full time packing fish and working wells. At 16, you left for a foreign shore, worked hard, learned to read, saved all that you could to pay mom's passage and two brothers more, keeping a promise as you knew you would. Of your son you were proud as proud can be, but one of your cells was worth ten of me. On Death and Rebirth We are born dying. Every step we take brings us closer to the grave. Death brings us release freeing our souls to fly free to eternity. Weep not for the dead. Their souls now know only joy in the arms of God. And the love you shared ripples through the universe to outlive the stars. Athena Goddess of wisdom, justice, inspiration, law, warrior goddess that is nobly so much more than what in ages past held the known world in awe, as patron goddess of all heroic lore. You sprang from Zeus's head and armor, fully formed, grew to be among the gods his favorite child, a warrior who as patron the arts transformed, fiercest defender of truth, enemy of guile. You live today in every woman's heart who knows the road to freedom is not paved with words of air. In the fertile ashes of battles, freedom grows, those battles fought and won by women everywhere. You, paragon among all heroes from the start, live on triumphantly in every woman's heart. Daughters of Eve God's second greatest creation is man, formed from clay into which he breathed new life, then perfected his creation in Eve, not from base clay, but from Adam's flesh and bone. On Adam God practiced his creation, and Eve perfected it, tweaking its flaws. More heart, less hubris. More sense, less muscle. More love, less hate. Focused on us, not me. Sacred texts written by men disagree with what is only a most obvious truth. God's truth whispered in men's ears only proves none are so deaf as those who will not hear. 
Thus women have been blamed for all men's woes, from Adam's fall to every earthly sin, marginalized, objectified, and scorned, as easy targets for men's jealous rage. Mankind is so much less than womankind, in all the ways that count, save in brute strength. Brute strength served tyrants well six thousand years. Alas, serves tyrants well still to this day. Barefoot and pregnant, subservient and poor, unschooled, unheard, and too often unloved, their primary role a breeding vessel to pleasure men and give them healthy sons. No voice, no vote, no power and no hope, to this day blamed by some for all man's ills, victims of rape stoned for their victimhood, honor killings from men most honorless. The miracle of life was gifted you. Men plant the seed and then their job is done. They can wander away to plow new fields while women nurture life cradle to grave. I am in awe of all that you endure and all that you accomplish throughout life. Diamonds treated like broken glass by fools whose brilliance shines only in their own minds. I am a son of Adam, share his flaws, and know full well women have their faults too. Yet for me hope for all humankind rests with Eve's daughters, not with Adam's sons. Coronavirus Lockdown Blues Our home turned into a prison, porting all my lectures online, working in quiet desolation long past midnight, afraid to go out, not for myself, but for the fear of bringing home what could prove a deadly contagion to the woman I love. No long commute to work, it's true, but also no sea of bright faces greeting me, motivating me, giving meaning to my life. No beautiful campus to walk through, no national arboretum with foliage lazily unfurling from a long winter slumber. No squirrels scurrying about, begging for treats or rummaging in waste paper baskets for discarded gastronomic treasures in the quads. No tender tendrils of tulips and daffodils tentatively reaching through their earthen blankets in search of the sun. No sea of fresh faces hovering throughout campus like glorious butterflies freshly reborn from 10,000 chrysalises, each with the face of an angel, ice bright and curious, looking ever onward to futures where all doors yet remain open. I am old when not in their presence, but always young when among them, as if newly emerged from my chrysalis, reborn, renewed, rewound. Technology is wonderful. I embrace it in most its forms, but human interaction is not meant to be reduced to bits and bytes. I want my classrooms back. I want my students in them. I want them, my loved ones, friends, and colleagues, all whole, safe, and fear-free again. This too shall pass, I know. And yet I see the daily death numbers grow, death all around where my loved ones live, both here and in Spain, both today and tomorrow. I don't care at all for myself. I've had a good life, most of it, in the company of loved ones, and students become colleagues, become friends. But life's far more precious than my own to me, are at risk, and I am helpless to do anything about it, save for staying indoors in my self-imposed cell, surrounded by dead leaves, and nary a butterfly.
to thine own self be true. Some simple words to all my fledgling brothers and sisters of the pen, who long to sing most beautifully and stretch their downy wings of poetry. No expert I, nor one who soars on powerful wings in cloudless skies, but nearly fifty years of steady flight does some perspective bring. In all humility I offer you some simple truths that I have learned throughout the years in hopes that they may help you fly, long, sure, and true to meet your destiny. Read widely, friend, and learn the forms that you may yet grow to disdain. It will enrich both your life and your poetry, expand your wingspan, and power your flight. You must know the rules of writing and of poetry before you can break them, else you will strike dissonant chords like nails on chalkboards and ears not owned by fools. Learn all you can about the world, its inner workings, are grist for the mill. Peel back the layers of life like an onion, and truth will be revealed, though often through tears. Again, read widely, no substitute for that, but write in your own voice. Poetry is not karaoke. Do not imitate. Let your true voice rise above the din. Learn all you can about the world, history, philosophy, literature, culture. It will amplify your view and give you X-ray sight to pierce false facades of prettily adorned lies. Life is your canvas, ideas are your paint. Rules the brushes with which to render truth as seen through your eyes to show the world, limit not your subject to me, myself, and I. Whether your talent is great or as small as mine, you have the power to open closed eyes, to touch both hearts and minds and change the world by skillfully stringing words one at a time. Your voice is as unique as a snowflake, amplified by your skill and singular vision to a crystalline palace the whole world can see. Sing out your melody, and always, to thine own self, be true. Thank you very much for listening. This is uh, one of the things that I do during this lockdown, <laughs> to try as hard as I can to maintain my sanity and to take some, uh, uh, some much-needed uh, work uh, breaks and I at least uh, enjoy this. Uh, I hope that uh, you uh, may have uh, found uh, something of value or if nothing else something to scoff at in uh, in my readings. Thank you very very much for listening uh, and please uh, please stay safe.